Okay, so it's it's fat, it's secured up, it's secured, and the deflection in this is equal to the gap that's still remaining. The gap that's still remaining because it was it could go tight. So this is why I told you this is just a uh, the part one of part one and two. Now the plate will go across here as this gets level going back up plumbing and closing the gap. It'll get secured to here to both sides and secure that so it doesn't rip or flip over, flip around or flip over or anything else. And that could be bolt and screwed with a little piece of block wedge in there. I mean, a little wedge inside here or not. It depends on how I look at it. Um, I could use plate on one side. I could attempt that. Plate on one side, a big ass plate washer, square washers on the back side, like two inch square washers. It would press into the wood. Eh, you know, I'm putting it, you know, I, I, I prefer that this be a long term repair and not something you're coming back to visit. So the, the squash plate, the wood, it will be the wood in, internally in the steel is going to transfer the load from the good, the good lumber to the good lumber. So this will all be steel and secured here also. So we're looking about an eight inch piece all because of that. This, this I'm not hating on. I, uh, I like the strut. It had, you know, holes in it. I was going to make an I beam to show you what an I beam would look like. If you had a mini I beam, you put a flange on it. You can try to secure it to there, weld up everything. But I thought that I'm going to show you how to do it without welding. That you just need to drill holes without welding because a lot of you wouldn't want to go to a welder. So this would be a way to get around the welder. Yeah, you could use an angle iron here, but it's not, this is going to be stronger than an angle iron. Uh, the 90 degree angle iron. Um, you could use a box tube also, but then you're going to crush it and you won't get the securement uh, like that. Um, so, just want to see what you're looking at here. So now she's, she's, she's getting tight. She's not there yet. Again, it was fully closed. You know what? Let me put it back for you and show you the difference. Well, we saw the gap. Let's, let's look at that gap again. So, you see the gap. Let me indicate it there. My finger. And now let's show it without the gap. Well, maybe I'm on crack. It doesn't look like a gap open. I really, it's, it's in there. It's back up there again. And maybe it didn't settle. I thought it did. I tell you what, it needs a little relief against that pipe though. That might allow it to go up more. See how tight it's pressing against the pipe? The fibers are. Hmm. No, I, uh, I cranked it. It went up. And it went, if it went up like you saw, I'm just buckling the board now because it's not closing. Where's my finger marks? Ah, uh, yeah, it's closing. It's closing. So you see it's closed. Now it's taut. Here we go. Right there with my finger marks. A little bit of gap. Maybe it's just bypassing each other. A little left and righty type thing. So, plate. Plate time. Hope you enjoy this part of the content. Again, plate. You may be tempted. Oh, now I can use a 2x4. Don't do it. The stresses are exactly where you see them. There's no, you don't have to guess it. Did it move? Did it, it's exactly where you see them. It's still right there. Don't use wood. It's just going to put that wood fiber in tension. Let's see, where's that lumber? Here we go. It just, so if you would nail it like that and then there against the wall there, against the choice. Well, that's kind of good in this one because they're long this way. So you're trying to tear them apart. If they were like that for some reason, um, you can see that they would pull apart this direction if the fibers were, if the wood was running with the grain like that. Maybe I can, so let's remember that grain. Let's see if I can look around for a piece of grain. So luck would have it. You've got some junk out back. Say so you screw this to the wall there, to there to use your piece. You screw into here. Now see the fibers? They go this direction. You can see where it would want to split. It could just split that easily. The fibers are in that direction. 
this material, the fibers, any other direction. It does matter. You know, this is not should not be used for structural repairs, as I'm showing you. This wood should not be. Even that one or this one, neither one. Not even in a last-minute deal. You know, just use something that will that will address it. This is why you don't use the wood in in that capacity because again, the split. See how easy it would split down there. We just follow it back up, just like a cakewalk. This one would be a little tougher being the grains on the opposite uh, direction. So shout out to Tears on this one. You uh, you like the grain. You and your mother like the grain videos I do and this, this stuff. And all you other engineers out there, don't spec sistering lumber without also sister specifying grain pattern. That this grain pattern sistering lumber is worth shit. Unless um you can uh you know it's it matters it matters how it is is there not down the end is there not down that board you know is it is it good just stop specking this bullshit all right do your work do your work and make them to put steel up make them do some uh a truss system or something an upside down truss system as you're seeing there like a think of it like a bridge okay so it's this is a drop ceiling and i'm going to add this to you you can um, you see the stress there and the deflection. You can make this larger down here, you know, if you have that larger capacity to do it, to make it that I-beam I told you about, or boxed beam that you would drill it through one side and then drill all the way through and it's put, attach a box beam to it. That would, box beam would really work. Would be a, a larger box beam would do it. Expensive, but it would get you in there. <coughs> Excuse me for the dust. Um, all right. Hope you're enjoying the content. Say hello to my little friend, which is next. Incidentally, that's probably the last uni strut I have available. So you might see. And uh, if I if I show you more, I might do that box beam over there. This will get the relief cut. That is did not go the way I thought it would. I thought it would uh, level back up and clear itself, but I saw it rubbed in there yesterday. A black mark against. Can't really tell here, but it was a black mark against there indicating it was rubbing against the pipe. I said, ah, when it levels back up, it'll clear it. No way did they cut it that perfect. Apparently they did, and maybe the red pipes moved a bit, but it's rubbing on the wood itself. This one is not. So note for yourselves, like that will be notched out now. Uh, I think it was DOS. Uh, DOS, yes. This is the uh, gas piping, 50s or so. It was changed out. It was it was gas. I did. You asked me how did I know it's no longer existing. Chase the uh, incoming pipe everywhere, and it goes to two locations: a heater and a uh, stove. There are no other breaks break, uh, tees off of it, off of the pipe. It only goes to those two locations. So therefore, and there's no other form of way of getting gas in here, unless it was the neighbor's gas coming in, which is uh, you know happens back in the day. People shared gas and shared this and that. But this is a. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't find where it terminates down below, but it terminates. I found a few more places upstairs in the attic where it came down. Not going to bother you with that. The other option here is to uh, remove all the, these pipes here. You've got this drop ceiling. Lower this down and reconnect over there. Cut the pipe. Open it all up. Cut the pipe. You can use a, a PEX type system with an aerated since it is a boiler system, a heat uh, radiator system. You don't have to go back with steel. Um... But uh, this won't fix the floor joists. Oh, well, it would, you'd fix the floor joists then and then put the pipes back. That's when you could possibly consider your sistering of your joists if you can get along, if you can get all the way, pretty much over to each end. All right, over to each end, the full length. But of course, you'd have to pull out your, your, your knob and tube and put it back. And I'm not sure if you're legally allowed to pull out knob and tube and, and put it back to run. Knob and tubing. That's an interesting question, isn't it, for you electricians out there? Can you run knob and tubing? Now, yes, it's lower. It, knob and tubing is aluminum wire, and you get lower um, total amps out of it. So even if you want to put 20 amps on it, don't do it. You know, a 15 amp breaker is uh, what you should be limiting yourself at, because that's the smallest breaker we have. Arc fault protectors, of course, now are required, so arc, arc fault, you want to do that. And end of video. Oh, I do like knob and tubing though, guys. But, you know, it, it, I can touch this all day long without their shorting out. There is no short that will take place like the arc fault. It will take place in your new cabling where the neutral ground and, uh, and, um, hot are all together. 
These never touch. Look, they miss each other. So to be scared of it is, uh, you're, 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 it's only at the box where they where they often do not use a box. They'll just put it in a wall, something funky like this. I had them terminate the terminate this. This is not connected. I had them terminate it. They did run an MBX cable, but there is no box. This is it. I had them. Uh, I had them uh, for safety reasons. Terminate it. See it. It came up in the in a bit in a cable. See the cabling, and that will come out. That cam comes out, and that's it. Go and run a new electric over here. It's home run for the uh, for it. All right, end of video. Thank you guys. Love you. And if this helps you again, support my cats. So send. Look at the little gift li wish list. Support them. Shout out to Carolyn. Now your gifts are always. You know, I'm not sure if anybody else. If I need any more support with Carolyn. I just need to make, check your health out and make sure you get uh, uh, your health benefits, keep you alive. All right. Thanks, Carolyn. Hope you appreciate the joke. Uh, well, you know, the humor. Take care. Love you guys. Jay, you want to say hi? Hi. Uh -huh. You want to holler out hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. All right. Here you go.